In this example, we're asked to show that this given function, f of xyz equals mmg over r, is a potential function for the gravitational vector field. And I've written here the gravitational vector field that we studied in the last section, just so that we can remember what that is. But we need to remember what it means to be a potential function. So this function, little f, is going to be a potential function of the vector field, big F, if and only if the gradient of little f is equal to big F. So this is the question actually. So this equal sign is not a given. We have to show that these two are equal. And in doing so, we need to remember what this R is. So the way that this is written, it doesn't look like there's any, any X, Y, or Z on the right hand side. But remember that the M, M, capital M, lowercase m, and uppercase G, these are constants based on either nature, that's big G is a constant, a natural constant, um, or the objects that we're uh, questioning here. So the masses of the objects are the m's. But r is a variable. So r is the radius, uh, the distance between the two centers of these objects. So we put one of them at the origin, remember. And the other one, the distance to its origin is then the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. When we look at this now, we see that these equations are both very symmetric, so they're pretty much the same in every variable. So what we really are going to do here, I'm going to I'm going to compute the derivative with respect to one of these variables, and I'm going to leave the other two for you guys to check, but it's it's all going to be symmetric. So if we can show it for one variable, I'm going to say that that's enough and let you guys do the rest of the work. Um, but remember, the reason we're taking derivatives is because the gradient vector, the gradient vector field of a function is the vector field whose component functions are the partial derivatives and the coordinate directions of the function itself. Okay, so I want to show then that the x partial derivative of this function f is equal to the x component function of our vector field capital F, which is the gravitational vector field. And so to do so, I just need to very carefully take a derivative. So uh, let's do it. Our f of x, y, z, I'm going to rewrite as um, in terms of x, y, and z. So this is then m, m, g over the square root x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Okay, and then I want to take all the partial derivatives, but like I said, I'm just going to do the x partial derivative in this video. But the f dx is then going to be the partial derivative with respect to x of this thing, but I'm going to rewrite this so that it, it's a little, it looks more like a chain rule. So it's going to be the partial derivative of m, m, g. This is all constant, so I could take this out now if I want. But then times the sum x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the power negative half. Okay, and then when we take the derivative, this is just a chain rule and the mmg is a constant, so this hangs around. The derivative of this portion, again by the chain rule, is negative one half, negative one half, times x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the negative three halves power but then by the chain rule, since we're taking the x derivative, this is times 2x. Alright, and then all that's left is to rearrange this. We notice that the 2's, or simplify it I should say, the 2's cancel, x is here, and this term can be pushed to the denominator. And so at this point we have minus mmg times x over 3 halves power, I'm going to write as the square root x squared plus y squared plus z squared quantity cubed and then we remember okay that x squared plus y squared plus z squared square root that's just r so this can be written as minus m m g over r times x okay and when we compare with our vector our gravitational vector field we see that that's exactly what we wanted to get um, what's left to do though is to make sure that that holds for the other two components as well. Just because one component is satisfied doesn't mean that the other two always will be as well. Um, in this case I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. So I'll write here exercise. You should compute the partial derivatives df dy and df dz and show that those also 
uh, co correspond with the gravitational vector field.